I know, I know, the intro's nothing spectacular, it's just a few simple kills, but I think I've been inflicted with the plague. So if I sound a little bit different than normal, it's because I have this terrible throat cold. I'm pretty sure I'm getting over it now, I'm in that phase where it's finally starting to go away, so hopefully I'll be back to normal shortly. I'm not going to be one of those people who's going to apologize for sounding different, but I figured I'd just let you guys know so you guys didn't think I was dying or something. Although, I will apologize for not sounding a little bit more enthusiastic. I'm a little bit drained on energy. And I must say, after all of the stuff that I've taken for cold-related symptoms, where you, you go to the drugstore or whatever and you buy yourself some, some cold medicine, nothing has worked better than whiskey. It's like a magical potion that makes you feel better. Now, I haven't drank enough to get me drunk just enough so that it calms my throat a little bit. It really has soothed my throat, so that's good. Anyways, I just wanted to get that out of the way and let you guys know. Oh, I sound a little bit different, but today I thought it'd be a good idea to show you a change that has come to Dirty Bomb recently. I've left my DX Tori up in the top left so you guys can see my FPS. So if you're wondering, this is all being recorded with Shadowplay so that there's no performance downgrade issues with recording that comes with recording. So that's the only reason DX Tori is there. And also, if you're wondering why I placed down my turret right there, it's to help get away. It counts as collision since it's an enemy turret towards the enemy team, and their whole team just spawned right there, it's a good way to get away. Also, if you have noticed, I am using Bushwhacker. Some people like to call him Bushwhanker, but I guess it depends on who you are. And the reason being for that is because in my previous video, I said that I don't think he is a very viable merc. I want to kind of take what I've said from that video and just kind of throw that aside. I will say that all mercs, I think, are pretty viable in the current position that they're in. There is some that are a little bit stronger than others, obviously, but that's just more based off of competitive play, which I don't actually play competitive. I've been asked a few times if I will play competitive or something like that. For me, I'm not a huge competitive person when it comes to games. When it comes to sports and stuff, I'm extremely competitive. I gotta win. I think I'd probably have to classify myself as a hardcore casual. So I like competitive play, but not so much that I need to play it all the time. I like enjoy playing games with my friends and just having a nice normal gaming session. So if you're wondering why I don't play competitive in other games, that's the reason. I just enjoy having fun in games. But back to what I was saying before about the FPS counter, the whole reason for this video is there's been a huge update, well, what I like to consider a huge update, and that is there's been a huge frame rate increase. Before in my last video, I was complaining, saying that in the last update, there was something that they did or something that has happened, glitch worthy, I'm not sure, to the maps where I was getting really low frame rates to the point where I was actually dropping down to, I think about around 40 frames per second, which is extremely low for me, and especially in a game like this where there's not a huge amount of graphical things going on, particles, well, I guess particles are a little bit different. If you have like a bunch of curas or naders, then obviously your frames are gonna drop a little bit more, but you get what I mean. Now, however, if you've been watching the FPS counter in the top left, I'm getting upwards of 70 FPS consistently, even in some pretty particle-y, is that a word? In open areas where there's a lot of map design and clutter, which I think is absolutely amazing. And by the way, I'll mention I'm playing on max graphics, the highest settings you can possible, and I'm still getting these frames. Normally I wouldn't play like this because I have a 144 hertz monitor and anything over 144 FPS is a lot easier to play with. If anybody is heavy into FPS games, you'll understand that. But I kind of just wanted to showcase the update and show you guys the frames that I was getting because of the update. I know a lot of people I've read on forums are still getting some really terrible frame rates, but I guess they're kind of working out the bugs with the update and all that. So, And I should mention, this day I got amazing frames, but the next day I wasn't getting as great. So I don't know if there's some variable that's connected there for the reason that I'm just losing random frames, but I'm sure they'll figure it out. To add on top of the max graphics, I also decided to play it on an 8v8 objective server so you could actually see maximum amount of players possible on a, on a bigger map because execution maps tend to be a little bit smaller or an extension of the objective maps. So yeah, I hope they really figure out this update and the little bit of bugs or whatever because it'd be really amazing to always get this amount of frames all the time. Now on to Bushwhacker. I know before I mentioned earlier in the video that my previous video I'm gonna probably get confused, I'm so sick. But I was mentioning that he's not as great of a merc on defense as others. I feel like that's not really true, and that's why I said scrap what I've said earlier. Mainly because I don't play 
competitive, so I, my opinion really doesn't count. I just, I've always heard people complaining how he wasn't strong, so I just kind of believe them without even trying them out for myself, so that's why I'm doing it in this video. And I must say, out of all the engineers that I've played, I actually really like the playstyle for him, is because it's more a little bit laid back, and you kind of have to let your teammates go in, because you're not a run and gun type of merc, although I suppose you probably could be. But I feel like my main objective when playing him is to set up a defense, a solid defense and an angle where the enemy is going to be trying to come from, like their spawn point. <laughs> That's kind of what we were doing here. They weren't able to actually push past this point. We had them in a bottleneck, which was absolutely amazing. And for those players complaining that the enemy team is not shuffling teams because your team is losing, let me explain something. Just because your team is losing does not mean that it's an unfair game or that the teams are unbalanced. If you're getting dominated right from the get-go of the game, when you can't even leave your own spawn point with spawn protection, then yeah, the teams are a little bit unfair. But the fact that you guys can't push past a certain point does not mean that you need to shuffle the teams. It just means that you're not going about pushing the objective the right way. Whether that's changing up mercs, or changing the route that you guys are going, or coming up with a little bit of a strategy. I know that's kind of difficult in public servers, but you guys get my point. I wanted to mention that because I see it all the time in games. Basically every game that I go into, whether I'm losing or winning, the teams want to be shuffled and they say that the game's unbalanced. Yeah, maybe it's not actually the skill of your players, it's just the fact that you have five Vasilis and one Medic. And to put the cherry on the cake, it's casuals. It's a casual objective mode. If people don't want to switch, they don't have to switch. It's not like you're losing anything from losing the game. Obviously people want to win, and that's why they get frustrated, but you're not going to lose anything. So cap the rage train and play the game main. You feel me, dog? I'd be a terrible rapper. <laughs> Just because I'm sick does not mean that you're getting away from my terrible humor, okay? You signed up for this when you pressed that subscribe button. I'd also talk about what I'm actually using for a loadout, but to be completely honest, I have no freaking idea. As far as I'm concerned, the Blish Lock is probably the best SMG. I love it. It does, I think it does 36 headshot damage and 18 body damage. Which, to me, is phenomenal. It's insane. Especially since you get a green sight, green red dot sight. I don't know what you actually call it, because it's not a red dot. I guess just a green sight. Doesn't sound as good. But for me, it plays right into my field of playstyle, since I like to try to hit people at long range, and I'm always aiming for the head anyways. It's very rare that I'm not aiming for the head. It's, it's probably in close up battles that I won't be, but even then, I do my very best to try. So the fact that it has a slow fire rate, the high damage, a sight on it, it just, it's amazing. The only problem with using this gun is that I don't think the loadout card actually comes with the one perk that I really want, and that's the quick lock-on, or the quicker lock-on, sorry, from your turret. So I could be wrong, but that's a big downfall if that's the case. However, the only thing that I do know that I have on this is the extra mags, so that's always nice to have, because I find myself running out of bullets real fast. Now I do want to take a step back and talk about Bushwhacker as a whole, again because I feel like I haven't really mentioned what I wanted to say about him, and that is, I really do think he's a great merc on defense, as long as you play him to his strengths. You can't do the same stuff Fletcher or Proxy does, you're not going to be in those up-close battles, at least you shouldn't be, as I get nated by Fletcher. He stuck that to me through, through the window by the way, if you guys didn't see that, it was real quick. But yeah, you shouldn't be in the up-close battles, your turret should always be a secondary target, you never want you have the enemy team aiming for the turret. You want always want them to peek you, and then when you fall back because maybe you've taken a little bit of damage, then they hit, push out and they get hit by the turret, and then when they start aiming for the turret, then you start shooting them back, and then they have to prioritize their fire. That's what I love about him, is he's got two strong points himself as well as the turret. You treat it as a friendly support. Now, I've said this in a previous video, and I'm sure people are probably going to get tired of hearing this, but I've never said this was a one-game channel, so don't ever expect me to just upload one game and one game only. That'll never happen. I have too many different interests. Anyways, that's all I have for the time for today, guys. I apologize if it wasn't kind of a normal video. It's a little bit more chillaxed than normal, I think. It's kind of the only thing that I can do while I'm sick. And as usual, I'll catch you guys in the next one.